First, we are following breaking news out of Lebanon where the Israeli military says it has carried out a strike targeting the Hezbollah commander allegedly behind Saturday's deadly attack in the Golan Heights. For more, let's bring in CBS News contributor Andrew Boyd. He's the former chief of operations at the CIA's counterterrorism mission center. Andrew, I feel like we hear rockets being launched. We've been, it's been sort of a tit for tat. Is this an escalation? Uh, good afternoon, Lindsay. Um, it, it could be an escalation, but really it's a retaliation for the Hezbollah attack, alleged Hezbollah attack against Majid al-Shams in the Golan Heights uh, over the weekend that resulted in the deaths of 12 Druze children and then re repeated uh, rocket attacks from Hezbollah. So really a retaliation uh, more than an escalation. The concerns are, and they were uh, uh, allegedly targeting Fouad Shukr, who is a senior military advisor, se senior military commander, uh, under Hassan Nasrallah, the head of uh, the Secretary General of Hezbollah. If, in fact, that targeting did not succeed and they did not uh, kill Fouad Shukr, I, I believe the IDF will continue their attacks uh, uh, against, against Hezbollah, which then may lead to an escalation. I know you said this was retaliation, but if we can put up the map again, most of the fighting between Iran-backed Hezbollah fighters and the IDF have been taking place at the border, the northern border between Israel and Lebanon. So the southern Lebanese border, we're talking about Beirut here, a very, very populous city. That is true, the, but the attack again happened in the uh, Beirut's uh, southern suburbs in a neighborhood called Parat Harig, uh, which is Hezbollah's headquarters, and it was targeted uh, against uh, Hezbollah, Hezbollah leadership. Fouad Shukr is, was uh, allegedly responsible for the attack uh, uh, in the Golan Heights over the, over the weekend, uh, but he was also responsible for a great deal of other things. He's, he's on the U.S. wanted list. There's a $5 million reward out for him for his involvement in the 1983 bombings uh, against our own troops and our own embassies in Beirut, um, a, a, as well as him being in charge of the missile and rocket programs uh, for his blog, but more importantly, being the number one military advisor to Hassan Nasrallah, the general secretary of, of, of Hezbollah. I think the, the big difference uh, this past weekend was it was an attack that killed 12 children between the ages of, of 12 and, and 16, as I understand it, Druze children in the Golan Heights Again, not 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 uh, Jewish citizens of Israel, non-Jewish citizens of Israel, which which the Israelis, Prime Minister Netanyahu, feel as much of an obligation uh, to defend as as the Jewish population in Israel. Now, the United States posture has been that Israel has a right to defend itself, but many leaders have said um, that more needs to be done to protect civilian life. Now, we we haven't heard yet from. U.S. leadership. Um, we know that Secretary Blinken and Secretary Austin are overseas right now on an Asia trip. How do you imagine the United States will view this? Israel does have a right to protect itself, and 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 I, I do think that the overwhelming dialogue on defending civilians has been centered around the, the conflict in Gaza, and that is obviously an, an issue uh, that we've been dealing with uh, internationally for, for several months. Um, Israel also has, has an obligation to, to protect civilian lives in the city of Beirut. Uh, but, but again, I, I don't know if that is going to be an issue with this particular uh, strike in South Beirut. Uh, we, we will have to see how that shakes out, whether there are civilian deaths uh, what, or, or whether it was really just targeted against members of Hezbollah, Fouad Shukr himself, and then any of the Hezbollah members who are around him. Many U.S. leaders have been fearing um, what could be considered an all-out war between Israel and and Hezbollah. Why is that? And what other parties could potentially be drawn in if we do find ourselves, in fact, in that state? Because of the proximity of Hezbollah to Iran, uh, there's a great deal of concern that this will, will be an escalation and the capabilities of the Hezbollah military arms, their rocket forces, their missile forces, uh, their ground forces, could result in, in tit-for-tat retaliation that obligates the Israeli military to eliminate Hezbollah uh, once and for all. Um, there's been a lot of discussion that, that Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, is unique in his, in his desire to, to escalate uh, this with Hezbollah. I honestly think any Israeli leader would be under the same pressure because the Israelis, a number of Israelis, uh, upwards of 200,000 Israelis, have had to evacuate certain zones because they couldn't be too close to Lebanon due to Hezbollah and they can't be too close to Gaza uh, because of the Hamas attacks. I think the overwhelming uh, majority of Israeli citizens are sick of that, and they want these threats to be eliminated.
Did, did I hear you say an elimination of Hezbollah as well? I know we have been reporting um, that the Israeli goal is to defeat Hamas. Hezbollah was considered and is considered a more formidable opponent. I, I would argue that there's a number of Israeli citizens, a plurality, if not a majority, who, who no longer want their, their homes threatened uh, by Hezbollah. Whether that means an all-out elimination of Hezbollah, I, I, I don't think we're there uh, yet, but they want that threat to be eliminated. If that can be achieved by diplomatic means and a pullback of Hezbollah north of the Latani River, which was, in, you know, uh, where 12 miles uh, north of the Israeli border, which is, was was a previous agreement. I think the Israeli citizenship, citizenry will be satisfied with that. Um, but but there, I think most Israelis are sick of being threatened by their neighbors. But that said, is he facing pressure at home to see an end to hostilities? I, I think on the, in the Gaza context, Prime Minister Netanyahu is feeling a great deal of pressure to get the hostages home and to find a way to have a truce to make that happen. Hezbollah is un unfortunately tied to that issue, and Hezbollah has, has said they will continue pressure on Israel until there is a truce in Gaza with Hamas. So the two things, unfortunately, uh, are connected. To, to date, uh, the, the Israelis have not come to an accord or, or a truce uh, with Hamas. So, so I, I do think this will continue apace uh, with the hopes that it won't escalate into a, into a full regional war uh, Iran, Hezbollah, Israel, and inevitably the United States uh, will, will, will support the, our, our Israeli allies in one way or another. Andrew Boyd, thank you so much for joining us on this breaking news. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Lindsay.